All right, time to paint our camera, a very important part of adventuring so you can capture all the fun things you're up to. First, I'm gonna pick some gray to create the metal edges and details of the camera. So to make gray, I'm gonna grab my black paint and water it down a bit so it's not as dark, and I'm going to fill those spaces in. I wanna fill them in fairly neatly, and so I'm gonna to try to work while it's wet using a lot of water on my brush to move that gray paint around. Also trying to stay inside the lines, of course. I'm really using a lot of water too so I can lighten the gray. I'm going for a more of a silver metal look, not actually like a gray or smoky look. So I wanna really water down that gray and smooth it around. This gray will go on quite a bit of the parts of our camera since it's kind of a vintage look camera. It's got a lot of these metal edges and bits. So I'm gonna jump around and put my watery gray uh, in all of these different areas. The nice thing about putting a light gray almost everywhere is that if I decide I want something darker, like a black accent, I can go on top of it when it's dry. So I'm kind of putting it even more places than I might expect. Not sure if the buttons will be black or gray at the end because I can cover it up when I get to that point. So go ahead and put gray in more places than you think because you can always go back and make some darker. I also only did two rings of this camera part knowing that all of it is really metal, but again, I wanna vary the value. So maybe now I'll make part of it a darker black or part of it a lighter black going with um, just more or less paint on my brush. So to make my gray darker, I have less water on my brush and that makes it more opaque and therefore a darker value. Or if I wanna go even lighter, I could use almost plain water with just barely a tint of black to make a very, very light gray or even off white color. So play with a variety in your value to see how to change and add some interest to your camera. To show that some of these pieces of metal are kind of going in a little bit, I think I'm gonna to try to make the top of this circle a little bit darker than the bottom to kind of have this overarching shadow. So adding kind of one more layer of a light gray, I'm gonna make this top feel like it's going in and then that creates this sort of um, illusion that there's a depth to this inside part of my camera. I'm gonna go and make a few areas a bit darker on my other accessories like buttons and edges once again, just to create variety on the types of metal or values. So it's not all one color. So think about which sections you might be able to make darker to make it a little more interesting and to keep each part of the camera separate and helping us notice all the different details that the camera has. I've even decided to make this bottom section a nice dark black, trying to imagine what other colors I might be using and realizing that I do want there to be contrast at the bottom here, and I'll probably only be using one main color for my camera just to keep it unified and consistent. So I want to put my gray down here as kind of the accent or my black almost. This will be my darkest value to create kind of a detail or a stripe along the base of the camera. Okay, now comes the fun part of some color and the body of the camera. So you can really choose any color your heart desires, whatever color camera would be fun to have. Vintage cameras come in all sorts of colors. I've seen browns, greens, blues, even purples, um, or just keep with the neutrals. So if you did just a brown, it might look like a leather kind of look. That could be fun too. Um, I like the idea of a pop of color, so I think I'm gonna go with blue, um, but I might make it more of an indigo. So I'm gonna take some of my blue paint and move it onto the paint palette. But then I'm gonna mix it with some purple and see if I can get it to be a bit of a different blue. Just a bit more, especially if you're using these paints, a little less um, sky blue. I think I like this kind of indigo color. Yeah, that's very nice. And I'm gonna put this over the whole body of the camera um, and then I can create some variety with my values after that. So I'm taking kind of a medium value of my chosen color and I'm gonna put it everywhere. Without really trying, my color didn't mix exactly the same as the first time. So this blue in this section is a little bit more purple, but I kind of like that it has a change since there's a line in between. So it can be kind of happy accidents if your color doesn't remix completely in the exact same way, because then you can have 
a few different types of colors on your camera. So I've got kind of two blues going, which actually I really enjoy. And I do plan on pulling that blue into some of the reflection on the glass, but I think I'm gonna work on the strap. I think I'm gonna make the strap kind of have blue at these edges, but I think I'll make the actual strap brown to kind of have a leather aspect to it and see what that might look like. And if you like it, then you can do that. And if not, you can always do your own color, maybe even repeat your accent color or make it gray so it matches the rest. I'm gonna see what it looks like by adding some brown to my strap. time to go inside the glass. Now I'm ready to have some fun with this reflection. We're going to try to get the whole area wet except for our highlight if we can help it. Now that's going to be tricky but basically paint water everywhere except for those little curved rectangles and we're going to try to drip some paint in it to make a cool effect. If your paper is soaking up the water quickly then you make sure to add a few more layers of water so that the surface stays shiny for this next technique. Now that we have the paper shiny and wet, we're gonna start with some black. We're gonna drip in some black along the edges because there should be some shadow in how the glass curves. But then we're gonna work kind of quickly because it's wet. I'm gonna grab some purple and drip in some purple around. And then I'm gonna grab some blue and drip in some blue around. That was a lot of blue. I'm gonna go back to my purple, maybe even mix those two to make that kind of indigo color I had. I'm just going to let it do its pretty watercolor thing where it swirls and spirals and does interesting things to kind of make it look like the light is kind of hitting. Now one thing about cameras is oftentimes they do have this highlight or the center is lighter because it's kind of bulbous, it sticks out. And so I'm going to take a dry brush and just try to soak up a little bit of that color in the middle to make it lighter. Or you can take a tissue or a paper towel and just kind of dab up the center to try to get it to be a little bit lighter. And that's pretty much how I'm gonna leave it. Now my shadow didn't go quite all the way to the edge, so I'm gonna go back in with some more black and try to get it to go right up to the edge of the glass. But I really don't wanna mix those colors completely together. I wanna leave them separate and kind of moving. It just looks kind of magical, like, like it does in a real camera's lens when it's reflecting all the pretty colors around it. For the different areas up here, I'm gonna go for um, kind of a light gray again. But I think I'm gonna to try to leave bits of white too because those are kind of like their viewfinders, right? So they're, you can kind of see through them to see what's going on. So they reflect a lot of light. So I want just barely any gray in there. Let's see, I think I might do uh, a little bit of red in this little guy. He's kind of a light is my assumption. Maybe he's a button, I'm not sure, but the red kind of nice is nice, it pops out there. And then I do feel like I'm missing the brown that I put on the strap in the camera somewhere. So I'm gonna do another layer of some brown on this centerpiece just to have the brown in more than one place. What I notice when I'm composing a painting is if I don't have a color in more than one place, it can feel like it doesn't belong, unless of course the art is like many different colors once. But if I'm creating a unified object, it's good to repeat colors so they feel like they're connected. So now that I have a little bit of brown in my camera, it makes sense that it has the brown leather strap. So something to think about if you want your piece to feel connected is making sure those colors get repeated different places. I could also try to go a little more advanced and add some shadows to my leather strap. So here it's lighter and I could do a second layer of um, the brown down here to show a shadow or here where it's turning. It's already a little darker. That happened kind of on accident but I could add a second layer of brown there, thinking about where it's turning and where those shadows should go. So I could do a little shadow here. To make your shadow, you're just adding kind of a second layer of that color and that makes it get a little bit darker. There's a nice shadow. I think I'll leave it like that. So thinking about a few spots, you could add shadows. You could do that with your grays as well on your camera. So we did that inside here, but you could do it kind of at the edges. So if I take a little bit of gray again and do a second layer right next to this kind of center piece because this would stick off the camera right maybe a little 3d so i'm gonna get do a little shadow just barely at the edge those kind of things can be really nice and make a nice little accent and then i do think last but not least i'm gonna create a little bit of a dark edge around these rectangles because if they're gonna be white I don't want the edge of them to be white or they look like they're the same thing. So I'm gonna do a nice dark, dark gray, almost black frame around them to keep them separate from the rest of the camera. And maybe this guy will be dark too. 
play around, see with what things you can create variety on. It does not have to look exactly like mine by any means, but hopefully this gave you some tips and ideas of how to make it um, interesting and unique to you. So have fun painting your camera. I hope you take lots of pictures of your next adventure and that you can uh, remember that adventure while you're painting. So happy painting. <laughs>